So in, in these problems here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for the variable, and then ultimately we want to figure what is the actual measure of each of these four angles. All right, so for the first one, uh, it says angle A and angle B are complementary. So what does that tell us about angle A and angle B, Didi? They don't equal 90 degrees. The sum of the angles is 90 degrees. Okay, be careful how you say it, because if you say they equal 90, that tells me that both of these angles are 90 degrees, and they're not. They add up to 90, right? Okay, does that mean they're like 45 degrees each? No, no. no we, we don't know what they are. We just know they're going to add up to 90. Okay, the measures of them are going to add up to 90. So how do I portray that using an equation? Matt? I put 2x plus 6 plus x plus 9 equals 90. Okay, so 2x plus 6, that's the first one, plus x plus 9 equals 90. So we know that if we add those two together, we're going to get 90. Um, once we do that, what do we need to do to solve for x? Combine. Yeah, combine like terms, simplify, and, um, and solve. So we get 3x plus 15 equals 90. Subtract 15 from both sides, we get 3x equals 75. Divide by 3, and we get x equals 25. Now, this, this is an intermediate answer, meaning it's going to help us get the final answer, but the final thing we want to do is actually find the measures of those angles. Okay, Let's, let's practice using good notation here, too. So we want to find the measure of angle A. We'll write that we're finding the measure of angle A by writing that, um, and then equals what? How are we going to find it? 2 times 25 plus 6. 2 times 25 plus 6. So we just take this expression here and plug the 25 in for x, and we get what? Measure of angle A equals 56. Okay, so that's one of the things we were looking for. And then the other one is the measure of angle B. And we do the same thing. We plug 25 in for x here. So that's going to be what? 25 plus 9, so the measure of angle B equals 34. Now, what would be a good way at this point to check to make sure that we're doing things correctly? Add those together. Yeah, add them together and make sure that they add up to 90. Is 56 plus 34 90? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> it is. Um, so 56 plus 34 is 90, so that means that these two angles, if they really are 56 and 34, they are complementary. Um, so we probably got it right. It would be really crazy if we got two angles that added up to 90 here that, that were not the correct answers, um, because there's nothing else I could plug in for x that would make those two add up to 90. All right, so that's the first one. Second one's going to be pretty similar, except... Uh, what's the difference? Yeah, they're going to add up to 180 here. So the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D are going to add up, are going to be 180. Um, so we'll have 4y plus 5 plus 3y minus 7 equals 180. And then solve just like we did the other one. Um, so we get 7y minus 2 equals 180. So 7y equals 182. I, a lot of times when we have problems like this, um, I, get a, I get people that say, okay, 7y minus 2 equals 180, so 7y equals 178. They just subtract 2 over here. Be careful about that. Yeah, to get rid of the minus 2 over here, you have to add 2 to both sides. Um, so just be careful about your algebra. It, I, I really hate it when people miss this kind of stuff because they, they do the geometry right, um, but then do the algebra wrong. Okay, the geometry step is actually just this step right here, where you set up the equation uh, using the fact that they're supplementary. Um, divide both sides by 7 and you get, what, 26? Yeah. Alright, so we get y equals 26. Now, we're going to use that to get what we really want to know, and that's the measures of angle C and angle D. So how do we find the measure of angle C? Put 26 in for y, so 4 times 26 plus 5, so that's 104 plus 5, which is? Okay, so measure of angle C is 109. And 
measure of angle D, it's going to be 3 times 26 plus, oh, sorry, minus 7. 3 times 26 is 78. Minus 7 is 71. So we get the measure of angle D equals 71. Again, we could check this for accuracy by adding those together. Um, and we should get 180. Do we get 180 when we add those together? Yeah. One thing I want to say real quick about the definitions. Um, the definitions are biconditionals. So they, they tell us two things. Um, the, we're only really using one of those things for, for these problems. So the definition of complementary angle says two angles are complementary if and only if their sum is 90. So what we're doing here is we are, we're told that they're complementary. So you're given information that the angles are complementary, and we use that definition to say, okay, they're complementary, which means that the two angles add up to 90, right? Yeah. Right? Okay, you could, do, you could do it the other way. You could say, okay, I'm going to give you two angles here. Um, let me just bring this up. So let's say that I just give you two angles, and this one is 30, this angle here is 60, and then you could say, okay, since the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F is what? Okay, so you're given this information, then you, what could you say about these two angles? You could say they're complementary. Do you guys see that those are two completely separate things? They're basically working in different directions. So one of them, I tell you that they're complementary, and then you use that information to get something else. And the other one, I tell you that they add to 90, and use that information to say that they're complementary. Okay, so those are really two different things, two different directions of, uh, of reasoning. And so that's why it's a biconditional. It works both ways. All right, and that's the way definitions are going to work in geometry class. So, naming angles. This is something that's really important. We've talked about it a little bit. Um, if I want to name this angle the way it is, this is not in your notes. I just, it's something that you need to see, something you need to hear. Uh, if you feel like you need to remember it, maybe write it off to the side next to your opener. Um, but if I want to name this angle, what would we call this? Angle A. Okay, that would be classifying the angle. But we could just call this angle A. Now, notice that there's no M in front of the angle symbol. If I put an M here, what would that mean? The measure, the measure of the angle. Okay, so this right here, that just names the shape. That's just talking about the picture of this angle here. If I put an M in front of it, that's talking about the measurement of the angle or how large the opening is here. Okay, so those mean two different things. This is a shape. Um, the measurement would be a number, right? Okay, so then what if the picture looked like this? And I call something in this picture angle A. Would you know what I'm talking about? Why not? There's actually three different angle A's here. So, but yeah, there's more than one, and that, that's the key here. So this could be called angle A. This could be called angle A. Or this could be called angle A right here. And we don't know which one we're talking about, uh, if I just call it angle A. So this would be what's called ambiguous. You guys know what ambiguous means? Yes. What does it mean? Okay. Uh, ambiguous means that it could have more than one meaning. So angle A here could mean more than one thing. It could mean this angle here, it could mean this angle here, or it could mean the whole big angle. All right, so we don't want to use ambiguous names. We don't want to use names that could mean more than one thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some other letters. All right. So when we name angles uh, that when we name angles that could be ambiguous, meaning that there's more than one angle at the vertex, then we're going to we're going to avoid using this type of um, terminology or, or this type of notation, and we're going to use three letters. All right. So uh, angle BAC. Do you guys know what angle I'm referring to when I say angle BAC? Which one? Well, there's two acute ones up there. Yeah, it's so angle BAC is going to refer to this one. All right, so notice that this letter right here is what? 
the vertex. All right, so we've got the vertex in the middle, and then on one side, we're going in one direction, and then on the other side, the C, we're going in the other direction. Okay, so one way to think about it is we start at B, we go to A, and then we go to C. So starting here, we go to A, and we go to C, and that's the angle that's formed. Okay, um, if I use the name CAD, angle CAD, do you guys know what angle I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That would be this one, right? Again, if we start at C, go to A, and then to D, this is the angle that we're dealing with there. Uh, if I used BAD, uh, it looks like it could be a right angle. It's going to be close to 90. Um, that would be this whole angle right here. All right. So the, the importance here is that we can use this type of uh, notation when there's only one angle at a vertex. But if we start getting more than one angle at a vertex, we need to use three letters so that we're clear about what angle we're talking about. All right, and that's going to be something important with some of our definitions here and some of the things we have coming up. All right, so we're on the back of the notes now. We're going to, um, we're going to go through and do these other seven definitions. And then we're, when we're done with the definitions, we'll go back and do those two examples. Okay, those two examples are going to use some of the definitions we do. Uh, what's a right angle? An angle that measures 90 degrees. Now, we're not just going to say an angle that measures 90 degrees because that's not a biconditional, right? Right? So a right angle, or the definition of a right angle would be this. An angle is a right angle if and only if its measure is 90 degrees. So this is a biconditional. This means that if I tell you something is a right angle, then what do you know? It measures 90 degrees. If I tell you that an angle measures 90 degrees, then what do you know about it? It's a right angle. So it actually tells you two different things here. What does a right angle look like? Everybody has something on your desk that you can use to show me what a right angle looks like. Corner of a piece of paper, right? Um, so if, if you want to know what a, a right angle looks like, you can take a piece of paper or the corner of your ID or the corner of your desk, even though it's rounded, corner of your binder, even though it's rounded. Those are going to be 90-degree angles. Um, so a 90-degree angle looks like that. And we use a, a special mark to mark right angles. What, do we, what kind of mark do we use? We use a little box there. Okay, so we mark them with a box that looks like that. Um, so we could say the measure of angle A equals 90. Um, that would actually be the second half of the biconditional. It says its measure is 90 degrees. Um, and the picture would look something like this. And you could, uh, you could hold up the corner of your paper, or I could use my iPad here and see that that is indeed about a right angle. A straight angle. What do you think a straight angle is going to look like? Okay. Looks like a straight line. Okay, it actually doesn't look like an angle. It just looks like a line. Um, but it is actually an angle. Um, so what do you think the definition is going to be? I'll give you a hint. It's a lot like the definition of a right angle. Say that again, Brooke. Go ahead. An angle is... There you go. An angle is a straight angle if and only if its measure is 180 degrees. Okay, so it's the same definition as a right angle, except it's 180 degrees instead of 90 degrees. And what does a straight angle look like? Looks like a straight line. Okay, this is an angle. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily look like an angle. It looks like a straight line, but it is indeed an angle. Um, and it just measures the opening from this ray here to this ray here. Um, what are these, what's another name for these two rays right here? This ray and this ray. What are they? Opposite rays. That's, that's going to be helpful to us, actually, for one of our proofs that we do later on. Okay, and then uh, the way we would write this mathematically, the measure of angle B equals 180. That's, again, the second half of the biconditional here. All right, next one we have, um, well, I put this on here, too. Uh, it's called a straight angle because it makes a straight line. I think it's pretty intuitive. Um, that we call it that. Congruent angles is actually a definition we've written down elsewhere. I'm going to have you write it down again, um, not, not just to be repetitive, but um, because now you'll have two angles are congruent if and only if they have the same measures. 
which is another way of saying their measures are equal. It doesn't matter how big or how small the angles are. Um, it doesn't matter where they are. This right here is a mathematical sentence that says exactly the same thing as a definition. Angle C is congruent to angle D if and only if the measure of angle C equals the measure of angle D. What can we do in a, in a drawing or a picture to show that two angles are congruent to each other? Didi? We can't put tick marks on it because if we tried to put tick marks on it, um, we, there's not really anywhere to put them because we can't put them just like on the vertex like this. That wouldn't really show. The, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put arcs on there. Um, so we we mark them with identical arcs. So the arcs could look like that. I'm gonna put a few different um, options up here. So we could have a single arc like that. We could have a double arc. Looks like that. Uh, you could even go three arcs if you wanted. You could do an arc with a tick mark on the arc, um, or you could do an arc with two tick marks on the arc. Um, so we've got lots of options because sometimes we're going to run into situations where we have different sets of congruent angles. Okay, uh, next one, adjacent angles. Another one we've got already. Um, what two criteria have to be met for two angles to be adjacent? They have to share. A side and the vertex. So two angles are adjacent if and only if they have the same vertex and share a ray as a common side. So they have to share a vertex and a side. I'll go ahead and put the picture up here too so you can draw what that might look like. Um, and we would say that angle YZW is adjacent to angle WZX in this case. Next definition, we have a supplementary angle. This is another one we've seen already. Um, I bet you can tell me exactly what this says, but I won't make you do it. Two angles are supplementary if and only if their sum is 180. A, a common uh, misnomer, a common um, mis... Speaking? Misspoken? I don't know. A, a wrong way to say this would to say that two angles are supplementary if and only if their measures are 180 or they are 180. Okay, the angles themselves are not 180, but when we add them together, they add up to 180. Okay, so we need to say that their sum is 180 or they add up to 180. Um, we could write that mathematically by saying the measures of the two angles, um, by writing it like this, the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle M equals 180. Um, as far as the picture goes, the angles don't have to be adjacent, but they could be. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but there's not really any way to mark that they're supplementary in a picture. Um, we would just have to say that about a picture um, separately. Next one's linear pair, which is often confused with supplementary angles uh, because they're very closely related. You guys remember what a linear pair is? What's that? Yeah, it's two angles that form a straight line. Um, so an important feature of a linear pair is that the angles are adjacent to each other. So two angles form a linear pair if and only if they are adjacent and they form a straight line. Now, we can, we can infer some things here and we can actually deduce. Um, I'll, I'll use that word because we're going to start some logic pretty soon. Uh, since they're adjacent and they form a straight line, we know that the two angles are going to add up to what? 180. And the reason is the measure of a straight angle is 180. Now, we're going to have to throw something else in there called the angle addition postulate. Sounds fun, I know. Um, we're going to have to throw that in there too to actually make that conclusion, but we know that two angles that form a linear pair are going to add up to 180 uh, because of that. So it's going to look like this. Um, I have angle GHJ marked in this picture. What kind of angle is angle GHJ? What is it? It's a straight angle. Uh, so the measure of that angle is 180. Um, so we could say here that GHK forms a linear pair with KHJ. Okay, the, the term we use, the verb we use for this is forms a linear pair. Okay, so the two angles form a linear pair with each other.
last definition is vertical angles. This is another one we've defined already, kind of, um, except I, you probably don't remember this, but when we define vertical angles, we did not define it using a biconditional, and we did not define it very clearly. Uh, we just said vertical angles are the angles that we get when, um, when two lines cross each other. So they're the angles opposite from each other. Um, so we're going to be a little bit more specific with this definition here so that it's, it's more usable. Okay, so I'm going to give you two definitions, and I do want you to write both of them down because both of them can be useful in different ways. Uh, one way to say it is two angles are vertical if and only if their sides are opposite rays. Now, this definition at first does not give you a very good visual of what's going on, so I'm going to draw a picture for you. If I have opposite rays here, you guys agree that these are opposite rays? Yeah. Okay, and then I also have another set of opposite rays here. You agree that those are opposite rays minus some bad drawing? Yeah. yeah. Here, let me fix it a little bit. That's better. Um, so since we have two sets of opposite rays, then this angle and this angle are vertical angles because their sides are opposite rays to each other. So if we say for this angle here, this is side one and side two, side one is opposite from this, this side, and side two is opposite from this side. Okay, so they're vertical angles because their sides are opposite rays from each other. Another way to define this is two angles are vertical angles if and only if, that's the same, they form a linear pair with the same angle. This is actually a more useful definition. Again, it's not immediately obvious what, what it looks like, so I'll explain that in a second, but go ahead and write that definition first. So what does it mean to say that they form a linear pair with the same angle? Let's, let's look at the picture here. Um, consider this angle right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this angle 3. What is, what's an angle in this picture that forms a linear pair with angle 3? Dee Dee? This one over here? This angle? No, they don't form a linear pair. Remember, they have to form a straight line. Um, one way to, a, an easier way to look at this would be cover this part up right here. Not, well, that didn't do a whole lot of good here, but if we cover this up here, um, then this right here is a straight line, right? So if I call this angle up here angle 1, angle 1 and angle 3 form a linear pair. You guys agree with that? Okay. Um, and then... Oops. Sorry. Um, so if I call that 1 there, if I cover up this right here, angle 3 and I'm going to call this angle 2, um, angle 3 and angle 2 also form a linear pair. So angle 3 in my picture here forms a linear pair with 1, and it also forms a linear pair with 2. The only reason I call this angle 3 is because it's, it's the third angle in, um, in what we're doing here. So 1 and 2 are vertical to each other because they both form a linear pair with angle 3. This, this fact here is actually what makes angle 1 and angle 2 congruent to each other, or at least a way that we can prove they're congruent to each other. All right, so uh, vertical angles are congruent. This is going to be a proof that we're going to do once we get into our deductive reasoning unit, um, but we'll get to that later. So let's use some of the information that we've gotten here. Um, there are two, two things in particular, two uh, angle relationships in particular that we covered here that, um, that I'm going to expect you to do algebraic type problems with. The first one is these two angles, and these two angles are what kind of angles? What are they? They're vertical angles. All right, so since these two angles are vertical angles, what do I know about vertical angles, Dallas? They are congruent to each other. So what can I do with these two expressions if I know that they're congruent to each other? Set them equal to each other. This problem is going to, or at least the setup for this problem, is going to look a lot like 
the setup for the problems that we did with the congruent angles when we had parallel lines for corresponding or alternate interior or alternate exterior. Okay, so since the angles are vertical, we know that they're congruent to each other. We can set this equation up and solve. All right, um, solving this, I'm going to pick on the little guy, get rid of the 3x. Subtract 3x from both sides, we get 15 equals 2x minus 11. Add 11 to both sides, we get 26 equals 2x, and so x equals 13. 13. Now, notice that the directions say find the value of x. So I got the value of x, that's all I need to do. But I might also ask you to find maybe the measure of one of the two angles. Uh, so if you did that, just like the problems we did before, you'd plug the 13 back in for x and solve. Okay? Um, the other type of problem we're going to do would deal with angles like this. These two angles do what? They form a linear pair. Okay, so these two angles form a linear pair. And since the linear pair makes a straight line or a straight angle, which measures 180 degrees, what do I know about these two? They add up to 180. Okay, so we actually know that they're supplementary, which means they're going to add up to 180. Um, so we can do 3y plus 54 plus 8y plus 16 equals 180 and solve that. And again, we're asked to find the value of y, um, so once we get that, we can stop. But I may ask you to find the measure of one of the angles. So if I ask you to find the measure of this angle here, for example, what would you do? Yeah, put 10 in for y. Um, so we would put um, 3 times 10 plus 54 would be 84 degrees.